Hi, I'm Mackenzie, and this is our Wyoming Life. Coming up on our Wyoming Life. New baby chickens arrive at the ranch, and we set them up for their new life in the KFC Witness Protection Program. Then, we pick up our processed meat from the butcher and get it ready for sale and shipment, locally and all over the United States. Then later, we sit back and watch the miracle of birth as one cow lets us sit in on the entire process. Here on the ranch, we raise and care for anywhere between 35 and 50 chickens, which we raise solely for their eggs. These eggs we collect, wash, and sell as farm fresh eggs to our local customers. To be perfectly honest, we lose money on chickens. The food that they eat costs more than we sell the eggs for, but they help keep us by keeping our product in customers' refrigerators, where hopefully they remember that we also have bacon which would go great with those eggs. It's a big week for chickens, as it's the time of year when we get new baby chicks. Every year we order around 20 new chickens to replenish our flock. Younger chickens lay more eggs, and chickens don't live long, although the world's oldest chicken lived to 16 years old, and her name was Matilda. Between foxes, coyotes, skunks, raccoons, and God knows what else, our oldest chicken is probably four or five years old, and they live in this chicken coop, which one of our neighbors called the Chicken Taj Mahal. Before I built this in 2010, they lived in a six foot by six foot hut. Now there are roosts, separate rooms for separating chickens and ducks and geese, and an automatic watering system. Yes, our chickens have roommates, loud and annoying roommates. It's kind of like being in college, but they all get along for the most part. Chickens lay their eggs in these nest boxes and we collect them every day. In fact, the girls are getting old enough that now it's become an item on their chore list, which means I only have to do it 95% of the time now. After collecting eggs, we take them into the kitchen in the shop where they are stored until they are packaged and sold. Commercial egg producers that produce the eggs that you buy in the grocery store, at least in the U.S., by law, have 30 days to package an egg after it's laid, and then another 30 days to sell that egg after it's been cartoned. Studies have shown that your average grocery store egg might be 45 days old or more by the time you buy it. Ours are usually sold and in our customer's fridge by the time they're a week old. If you like eggs and have never had a farm fresh egg, I urge you to head out and find a local producer and try some farm fresh eggs. The difference is amazing, and you can even see it. Our new chicks arrive via the post office, shipped from a hatchery in Missouri. The post office will call us when they get in, and we'll go to town and pick them up. But before they get here, we have some work to do. This is our chicken hutch. I built it a few years ago to give us a place in the shop to raise chicks until they're big enough to go into the chicken house. It's on wheels because, well, honestly, it's always in the way. First we fill the bottom with wood shavings to make it easier to clean and we add a small feeding tray, filling it with baby chicken food, a specialized formula of food to help them grow. The phone call comes in at 4 a.m. and Aaron heads to town to pick up the baby chicks. Upon arriving home, we open the box and give the babies a drink of sugar water to give them a little bit of energy after their long journey. Of course, Cheddar, our house cat, keeps a close and interested eye on what's going on. After all the chicks have had a sip of their energy drink, it's time to take them into the heated shop where they will settle into their digs for the next few weeks. We get some warm water ready for them in these little gravity-fed waterers and move the chicks in. After adding a heat lamp to keep them warm, we close the door and push their little house out of the way and welcome them to the ranch, where hopefully they will live a long and productive life. Hi, 
And while we're talking about local food produced here on the ranch, we can't leave out beef and pork. Each year we raise six steers and anywhere from five to ten hogs. Some of them are pre-sold to customers that would like to have a full animal, either for themselves or to split with their family. The rest are loaded up and taken to a USDA inspected meat processing facility, which we did a few weeks ago. Now it's time to head back and pick up our fresh beef and pork. Live weight was right around four tons of beef and a ton of pork. I'll be returning today with about half that in packaged meat. But first, we need to clean out our freezers from last year's meat. We always try to give our customers the freshest meat possible. And because there are many in the area that are less fortunate than we are, we donate our older meat to the local Council of Community Services, where it'll be used to feed anyone who wants a warm meal. We box up about 250 pounds of roast steaks and hamburger and load it on our trailer and take it where it can do some real good. Then I hit the road and upon arrival start loading hundreds of pounds of meat. It takes about an hour to load it all up and I turn around and head home. Where it all comes off the trailer and it's sorted into one of our many freezers. I'll tell you what, after loading and unloading all day, I'm tired and sore. Each one of these boxes weighs between 50 and 70 pounds, filled with bacon, pork chops, T-bones, ribeyes, roasts, and ham. And I'm getting hungry. Over the next year, this beef and pork will be sold not only locally at farmers markets, but across the U.S. as we package and ship a taste of Wyoming beef and pork to many waiting taste buds. If you've never had a chance to visit your local farmer's market, I urge you to do it this summer. Support your local producer. Buy vegetables, eggs, honey, and even meat. In fact, you'll be surprised what can be available to you at the local level all around the world. I guarantee the difference you will taste and you'll never forget. I'll give you a fair warning. This next segment shows the live birth of a baby calf in all its glory. And I'd understand if you don't want to watch it. But I will tell you, it's not gross, it's not bloody or disgusting, no bodily fluids are shooting all over the place. In reality, it's the conclusion of a long nine months for this cow and her calf, and the first chance to meet and love on each other. I'll shut up for a bit and let you just enjoy one of the hundreds of miracles that happen every year on the ranch.
Thanks for joining us. And I hope this episode has inspired you to try some of the local farm-raised and grown products that are available all over the world and in your area. Find your local farmer's market and support your local producers. It's not hard to do. In fact, I spend hours every Saturday in the summer at farmer's market, and it's not about people coming in and buying our products. Yeah, that's nice. But it's also about meeting people, answering questions, and showing the difference between what you buy at your local grocery store and what can be locally raised and harvested. Look, I'm not gonna preach at you. You'll do what you wanna do. But without your support, local producers can't succeed, and they will fade away. And that would be a very sad day. Thanks for watching. Have a great week, and I'll see you next time in our Wyoming life. Thank <laughs> you.